Great to uh, be back with everybody and uh, great presentation there, Nancy. I, I use that, by the way, like all the time, um, the dashboard there. And not only as uh, Vesa mentioned, you know, on the main desktop, but I also use it on my mobile quite a bit and it's super handy. So uh, I recognize that screen. <clears throat> You have to bear with me. I'm a little congested, I guess you could say, this morning. I don't know what allergies or something, but uh, we'll get through it. So uh, this is, I think, number 10 in our series on taking your line of business apps to the next level. And uh, in this one, we're going to focus more on the signing in part of the application. And then we'll kind of dive into some other aspects related to Microsoft Graph Toolkit. Uh, for those that haven't been here for maybe the other 10, my name is Dan Walleen. I'm with our cloud advocacy uh, organization and uh, in really enjoyed jumping on these sessions to talk with you. So let me dive on in here. And as, <clears throat> excuse me, as mentioned on this one, um, we're focused on kind of three main pillars they could take your apps to the next level. And one of those is AI, which you'll see in a moment. Uh, the next one is communication. And then this third one is bringing organizational data where your users are working every day. And we're talking more custom apps here. Um, so we'll focus on the signing in, but here's kind of a quick review of what we've covered. If you want to go back and watch any of the videos that are up on YouTube, uh, Vesa shared some of the links a little bit earlier, so definitely check those out. But we do dove into uh, round five, I think it is here, sessions on AI, and this was mostly uh, generative AI. So we're using Azure OpenAI, or uh, you could even use OpenAI directly if you wanted. But we talked about how we can integrate some of those features. We also talked about how we can integrate communication features, and this would be things like phone calling, or you might have SMS, email, all those types of things. And it's not a lot of code to do that. So if you ever need that, this app will have that as well. And then we get to where we're at now. So now we're on our third kind of pillar. And uh, last week in session nine, we talked about creating our Microsoft Intra ID. Again, the artist formerly known as Azure Active Directory, just in case you had heard it, um, and how we can create a registration there. And now we're gonna use that to actually sign in the user. And I, I guarantee some of you in the call, you've probably done this, but if you haven't, this is like super, super cool because it's a minimal amount of code, much easier to maintain and pretty easy to uh, get started here. All right, so let's dive on into the demo then. So where we're at today is, and I'm gonna actually mention one feature that's been updated. I'll get to that in a second, but um, is when you're in a line of business app, I all the time have to jump off. I I've, just as an example was, uh, I fly up to Ignite this afternoon actually, and uh, I had to go in and check on something for hotel and some other stuff for the talk. And, you know, I'm kind of diving out of where I'm at to another app, but there's such a huge opportunity, especially with custom maps, to bring that type of data into where the user is to avoid those context shifts. Um, so as an example, we can click on view related content and we'll get documents, uh, Teams messages, none for this one, uh, emails, and then we can dive into those if we'd like. And then we could also get calendar events that are for this particular company, a datum corporation. And this is just using standard Microsoft Graph calls. You know, I just built a little UI around it, nothing special there, and uh, brought this in. So let's go down to like Tailwind Traders because I think it has a little bit more. Uh, yeah, there we go. So here's our teams. And over the next two sessions, we'll talk about, you know, we can even send messages directly into Teams. And so basically the goal here is we don't want users to have to dive over to here, here, here. Just let them do their job if this is the app they work in a lot and bring the data to them. All right. So having sure of that, I want to do a real quick bonus here. So we covered uh, this would have been like probably week four, uh, generative AI. And uh, this will go out tomorrow, actually, uh, to the tutorial site that I'm going to show you here in a moment. But the uh, ability to chat against your own documents, um, this was previously based upon something called Vector. And Vector works great, but there's a newer option in this bring your own data or chat with your own data with Azure OpenAI. And uh, it is a, high, a more of a hybrid plus what they call semantic approach. And what it does is it actually goes out and does keyword searches for the data they type. So for instance, it might look for company or refund, but if it can't find that, it can use vector 
to find similarities. And then once those results come back, it can take that and it'll re-rank them. Um, and this is kind of the last step, and this is the semantic ranking, it's called. So this has just been updated to use that approach. And what that means is as users type maybe more vague uh, things, this will do a better, even better job uh, finding that type of data. So check that out starting tomorrow. That tutorial will be updated. And this, for those that haven't seen it, this is where we are today, but this is the tutorial that you can go through. So what I just talked about is the bring your own data. That will uh, merge in sometime tomorrow morning, uh, mainly because we have some other stuff that can't go out till tomorrow morning um, for, for Ignite. So, But we're here now. Um, so we're going to talk about how do I actually in this app, you know, get to the, the related data? Because obviously you can't just do that for a user and that wouldn't be good for security. So I'm, of course, logged in and this is just my uh, demo tenant account. This is my Microsoft 365 tenant. I'm sure a lot of you have them. If you don't, you can get this for free. It's great. Um, in fact, Aitch is here as well. Uh, this is a fake account, but so you could certainly write the code to make this happen on your own. But when you start getting into the pop-ups and the sign-outs and picking other users and all this fun stuff, you know, you end up writing a fair amount. I didn't write anything for this. Well, I mean, I wrote a, a line or two of code pretty much. Now, I did, as we went through last week, have to go into Intra ID and if we go into there, you're going to see if I go down to app registrations that I have this little app registration called Angular MGT right here. Now, I want to show you one thing on this. Um, this is where you would uh, normally set up the app registration, and then you'll see I can get my client. I'm, I must have my filter on here from another presentation. I don't really care on this one, but I'd get my client ID, my tenant or director ID, things that a lot of you have dealt with, right? No surprises there. Now, I do want to mention just for those that maybe haven't hit it as much, this particular app, it pulls a lot of different data. Not only does it pull the user profile, so I need read access to that. Um, it could actually pull their presence. You'd need access to that. Uh, obviously, we have files, need access to OneDrive for business, um, Teams chats and emails and calendar events, and there's even a little bit more that's not showing right here. So. I finally got tired of approving all that because normally once you log in and you've all seen this, you'll have to consent, right? So just for those that might not have seen it as much, if you go into API permissions, I'll show you the little, this is kind of a cheat I did because I run this demo a fair amount, but you'll notice I've granted permissions to a lot of things this app needs. And I, it doesn't use every single one of these, but most of these it does. Um, but you'll notice that admin consent is required like on this one. Uh, channel message read. And so there are some things where you're going to have to work with your admins, of course. And there's some things you could just let the user approve or deny. But I do want to point out that I'm already logged in, mainly just to save time here. But in doing so, the first time I'd log in, some of these things you're seeing here, these uh, scopes or permissions, uh, you would actually see a nice pop-up come up. And this login would trigger all that. So you'll be redirected to the login page. Once you log in, you'll have to consent. And then this would give access to these different features. Now, of course, if the user says no, then you'd have to gracefully handle that. And you know, maybe I hide these buttons or something like that. Okay, so that's kind of where we're at. But what was it, what was involved to get this uh, login here? Well, for those that haven't seen it, uh, I love it. They've done a really, really good job, the Microsoft Graph Toolkit team. And this one's been around for a long time. Now, next week, we're going to talk about a very new one that you might not have seen, but this one's been around. So you'll notice the first thing they show off here is the MGT login. In fact, you'll see a little preview of that right there. Looks pretty similar to what I just had. You can even switch modes and all that fun stuff. Now, if you go to learn.microsoft.com, you can uh, read more about this, but they'll have a link right below where you can go to a playground. This actually uses Storybook, it's called, and I have that right here. So you'll notice on the left that there's all these, I can probably zoom that even more. Um, there's all these different components, agenda and file and login, which we're gonna talk about here. Uh, people picker, I like a lot. Um, there's some new ones. If we go down to the preview next week, we're gonna talk about the search results. 
which is amazing. It'll eliminate a ton of code that you used to have to write. Uh, well, so we'll talk about that next week. But if we go to the login here, you can get to the docs, and this is literally all you'd have to do. Now, there's a little more to the story, which I'll show you in a moment, but this is a web component. Now, this particular app that I'm running here, the front end is actually an Angular app. Uh, we did that on purpose, by the way, because we had some folks go, why is it always React, which I do React too. And they said, can we do some Angular every now and then? So anyway, that's why this one is Angular. Um, we have a lot of other React too. So with that though, um, these components, they work anywhere um, because these are web components, which are just awesome if you haven't seen them before. That means you can hook into some of the events, which I'm gonna show you in a moment. You can customize with CSS, all, all the normal things. So I actually did that because I needed to kind of fit in with you know this little theme, not like it's a phenomenal theme or anything, but you know I wanted to have it look at least decent. So to do that, if you go into login here, this is kind of how you get started. Now, again, you do need to tie that in to your application. And so there is a little more you'll have to, in fact, now my filter's not running, but that's okay. Um, it's a demo. These are some of the IDs and things I'll need, and I'll show you that. Now, what I want to show you, though, is they have different ways you can use it. You could just show the avatar, for example, if you wanted. Um, you could show presence. Apparently, Megan is out of the office right now. Um, you can write a line. There's different templates. If you want to customize, you can see this one needs some work. <laughs> who, who amongst us is uh, great at CSS? Because we need your help, obviously, on this one. But that's kind of the show off that you can customize. And then there's also a lot of different events. So if we go into this one, you'll notice we can listen to login initiated, login completed, log out initiated, log out completed. That could be really useful because especially this is the one I've used the most. Once they've completed a login, you might make another call to go get some other type of data based on that user. Um, so very easy to hook into that if you'd like to. Now, to get this going, let me jump over to the code to wrap up here. We had a, a couple things we have to do. First off, yes, I do have some HTML for MGT login. Uh, I'm assigning a class to it, MGT dark in this case. And then here's that login completed I was telling you about. Now, I'm not really using this for anything super useful um, because we already have some of this data, but I put it in to show it. We're actually then using the graph client once they've logged in to say, okay, they're logged in, now go get call the API me and then get that data and emit it as an event. And then something else in the app could act on that. We're not really using that right now, but now we'd have access to their full profile. And of course we could act upon that. Now, in addition to using this, uh, the web component, we of course need to tell it about the app registration, right? So if we go into core here, um, you'll see I have a graph service. And at the top, we looked at this a little bit last week for those that were here, but for those that weren't, you'll notice this providers global provider. provider and uh, we have this MSAL2 provider. You'll see that all comes from this package. So npm install at Microsoft slash MGT, Microsoft Graph Toolkit. And that's gonna get us access to this stuff. And then what I can do is I'm pulling this during the build process. Uh, this won't um, won't be live at runtime in the browser. It'll actually be in the build process. I go grab the client ID back from that app registration. And then I define, here's some of those scopes I was showing you a little bit earlier that these are the things that this app needs to get access to so that when they log in, they'll have that option to consent if the administrator didn't do what I did, which most administrators would not. Um, I just got tired of hitting that consent. So I said, yeah, let's consent <laughs> across the whole app. Um, now, the last part of that is once you're signed in again, you can also get to information here. If we have a, a provider um, and we can mark the state, we can use this provider to check are they signed in? Are they signed out? Um, what's the status here? And this is just a nice little wrapper around that functionality. So what will happen is once they've signed in, this integrates with that provider so that we can know what is the status and all that fun stuff. So for those that have not used this before, 
I'll go ahead and wrap up by saying I love the Graph Toolkit stuff. In fact, next week, you'll see even more on how much code you could eliminate entirely by using different components in the uh, Microsoft Graph Toolkit. So with that, if you're interested in getting to the tutorial, um, this is kind of the one I showed a little bit earlier. You can actually, oop, that's not where I wanted to go. You can scan this code or you can go to this shortcut link here. And uh, next week, what we're going to be talking about is some more MGT functionality. In fact, we'll talk about a brand new component that's being used when you saw like the email and the files and stuff like that, um, that cut out a ton of code. So with that, thanks again. Uh, great to always talk with y'all. And Vesa, I'll send it back to you. Thank you.